Uh, so th there's one other piece which feels like a left turn. Maybe maybe I'm jumping sequence again, but I really wanted to see this guided install for logs. Yeah, um, so that's a good somebody, call. A couple weeks ago, was coming on the neural line. They said, oh, "I've got guided install to show you," and I was like, "Is this just some like interactive docs thing?" Like for serverless, I love serverless. Serverless team, you're amazing. I love you. Th thank you. I'm on the serverless team, so I'm trying not to like. <laughs> but for serverless, like we have these spots where it's like. Tell us your language, and then we'll give you instructions for that language. And I, th I thought it was that. And I was like, OK, I don't really want to have to do a 15-minute video segment on that, but OK. And then I saw it, and I, I, wow, like, boy, was I wrong. It is cool as heck. So yeah, I was hoping we could take a look at that. Yeah, for sure. So this is, uh, it is really cool. And it's, you know, it's always improving, always be shipping, that sort of stuff. Um, so leveraging the neural like, infrastructure agent, we can go on this magical guided install. So I've created a new Twitch demo account. I can hit next. Um, I've spun up an EC2 instance. I did this last night. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, and this is uh, Ubuntu 18. Uh, and the only thing that's on here is Nginx. And I've configured Nginx to have its like traditional static, like I'm alive page. Um, uh, and also a status page. So we want to talk about like the OG days of New Relic and sort of the OG days of really any metrics tool. Um, you know, back in the day, we had two offerings. One that monitored the server, essentially told you, you know, how much memory it was using, how much CPU it was using. And something else that did application performance monitoring, which instrumented every method and function and gave you like, how is your code actually performing? And all the time when I started out in support, people be like, well, I want to know how my, you know, node, node code is performing, or I want to know how my Rails application is performing. And it would turn out that they had just installed, they had gone to their server and installed something, but it was just our infrastructure agent. And at the time there would be this kind of question back, this sort of sense of betrayal, because maybe they installed it two weeks ago and now they wanted to know why they went down two days ago. And I was like, well, you know, you did install something, but it wasn't actually, you know, application monitoring. Um, and there would be this thing of like, well, didn't you know that somehow? Like, you know, it, it, it is detectable that you have a Rails app running, right? So can't you tell us that that we that we that there was data available, there was something there worth monitoring? And at the time, I was like, mm, no, <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. But hey, here it is, eight years later, and. You've been here eight years? Uh, no, I left. I left uh, to become a developer. And I've just been back this year. Ah, uh, how You're exciting. Um, so I, you know, you, you, this is the second time on this call. You're stumping me a little bit. I don't know if this works for APM data. I assume oh, yes, it does, it, so, but I don't so know. This is, this is the infrastructure side of that. Yeah. yeah. So it, 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 there is some limited ability to say, hey, I think we have a Java process running here, so you could go, should go install the Java agent. But, but closely related, I think, now we grab all kinds of information at a much deeper level from across the server. So what's really powerful here is not, it's not just the APM you know, server divide sort of uh, you know, back in the day, but it's much more just, yeah, we can see other services running on the server. Yeah. So... Uh, I'm using this guided install. It's asked me to copy this key uh, SSH into my um, Linux box, my EC2 instance. And you can tell, uh, as I said, I've got two endpoints. There's a status page on, uh, on my Nginx server. And then I've also got this welcome to Nginx page. I'm now going to paste in, noting that license key that I'm going to have to rotate later, uh, paste in the command. And this is where the magic happens. I'm given a choice, you know, what do I want to install? Do I want the logs integration? It's noticed I'm running Nginx. I didn't have to configure that. That's just magic. Yes, I love sounds, it. sounds great. It's going to do its thing. I will say I am doing this on an EC2 instance because I recently enabled Hyper-V on my Windows machine and it just decided that networking was fictitious. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. 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 Suddenly, suddenly all of your virtual network controllers are like, wait a minute. I think I exist inside some sort of larger machine. So you can see in the UI over here, we've got like, it's, it's in sync. It's understanding what's going on. It's installing the infrastructure agent. It's going to move on to doing the logs integration and it'll be doing the um, Nginx open source. So it's checking for data in New Relic. It's making some magic happen. At a previous uh, uh, job, I saw a lot of real-time 
web development work. So anytime I see anything like that, it's just like, oh, it's so nice. It's just like makes me a little bit happy inside. Right. Like, Everything should be web sockets. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's found that I'm running Nginx. It's even found that in the logs. Do I want to watch them? Hells yes, I do. Error logs. Uh, and then it's gone and looked at all of my var log files. Do I want to tail these things too? Why not? How generous of it. It's doing its thing. It's setting up. We run a fluent bit under the hood. So it's generating a fluent bit config for you that matches all these things. You can see over here, we've got the little uh, loading spinners for the log integration. So yeah, I mean, the part that really stands out to me is already the ability to say, hey, I see that Nginx is running here, right? Yeah. And and you we probably want to add some kind of instrumentation for that. And so rather than just telling you, uh, you know, go figure it out, go look at this doc or have some sort of link, it's actually like, yeah, let's just do it all with one command. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And you know, it's noticed I'm running Nginx. It's asked me for a status page. This is this is something I did prepare earlier. I did add that status page. It is a single uh, it's three lines of config within the um, Nginx config, but it's pulling down that open source package. And, you know, we're almost done. We're almost at the finish line. I probably should have oh, done an APT get upgrade as part of this process. There we go. <laughs> hey, nice. And it can wow. actually see like, hey, we're installed right over on the browser. Oh, I love that so much. Right. Click that see your data button. Look, this is my EC2 instance. It's I doing it. things. Look at these events. Fluent, be, fluent bit started. It knows what's going on. This is magical. It's so, a cute little graph. Yeah. Uh, and let's go and create some Nginx traffic. Uh, let's go and hit our, you know, like, I don't know, foo equals bar because I'm feeling really creative. Let's go and hit the status page. Um, and let's go and jump into the logs and see. I'm in the wrong account. Let's go into my Twitch demo. There you go. Here's my traffic. This is everything that's coming out of uh, var log as well as my Nginx. There's that status request. It's I can click. To glass. Like that's pretty extreme. Oh, it's really, really cool. And like, because New Relic, like it understands how all of these things connect to each other. So mm -hmm. we have all of this metadata that gets attached. I can go and click on the host name and from my log line, I can understand what is my host doing when this log line was emitted. Like mind blowingly cool. So that, that link to the host name, then that, that's taking you to the, the host's status as it was whenever this log line was created. It's not like your current host status. It's like, this is within context on that host. In, I mean, given that I'm looking at this log line within the last 30 minutes and everything Neuralic does is in that like 30 minute bucket, it, yeah, yes and no is yeah. my answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, here's the JSON view if you prefer looking at things in JSON, just being able to see, like this is all the metadata that gets attached. So, you know, I can, um, we also have a live tail mode, so I can go and look for, let's just go with foo. Again, feeling creative. No, that's a bad one. Let's go with bar. And I'll go on to live tail and let's pull oh, wow. our terminal and let's see that happen. There you go. Couple wow. seconds, live tail. And, and this is like, we have customers sending terabytes on terabytes on terabytes of data and they can narrow things down and look at a live tail, even, even just within what they're looking at, so. I love it. Um, wow, so guided install, that's something that everybody should be trying out pretty soon, so so do give it a shot. I mean, I think, you know, we've talked a little bit about sort of how to get access to all this, but this little chunk of video is really gonna be just about this guided install, so yeah, I mean, give it, give it a try. There'll be, if you're watching on YouTube, there'll be a link down below here to uh, start it up within your UI, I believe pretty sure that, that link was working when we tried it out two weeks ago. So, um, but yeah, it, it's definitely going to empower, especially smaller shops or people who maybe have access to a dev machine or otherwise who are, you know, big into DevOps. So they're, you know, coding and running this thing on their own uh, to see what New Relic could be gathering data on. And remember that New Relic has a free tier, right? You can send, what is it? A hundred gig a month for free? Yeah, no, this is absolutely like when I, when I came on, I've been here for exactly one year. Uh, uh, not today, but like 
yesterday or something. And that's my, that's not how my mind works. <laughs> it's it's a, it's been a day. But uh, uh, you know, when I came on, they said, "Oh, you know, we want you out like talking to boot camps. We want this lady in front of like mm-hmm. students and, and new developers." And at the time, I was saying, "Like, okay, well, how do I get them using?" It's like, "Well, they can use a free trial for two weeks." And then they have to talk to an account executive about, and, it's, it, and it was like, okay, I'm going to do my best, but this is a tough one. We started working on free tier like two weeks after I got here. So it's been such a fantastic time for me because now I can go and talk to conferences and game jams and all these other like, you know, scrappy little events and, and, and operators to say, yeah, this is an absolutely reasonable way for anyone to be measuring their app performance. Right. And like with that single click install, I get to see what's running on my process, how much memory it's taking, what it's doing, what mischievous things it's getting up to. I should install this on my Windows machine. Maybe it can help me with my networking problems. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, wait, Rebecca's got something to say. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So I went to boot camp and like, you know, when you first graduate, you're like so eager to like learn, but everything is super intimidating. And like even yeah. going to New Relic, you're like, oh my gosh, this is really cool, but I don't know anything that's happening. And like, yeah, we also just like have like a one line install yeah. to get like free um, monitoring is like, would and, be so awesome. And a very basic thing for me is now, you know, the New Relic offering has, you know, we can instrument so much that we do just end up also with rather than people kind of going too simple a route or finding, you know, the one wrong doc instead of the one right doc is like people totally on the wrong track, right? They're like trying to do a kind of instrumentation that they don't have or don't need yet. And so being able to just auto detect, like, here's what we can see already running and would like to monitor. Oh, so, so nice. I mean, uh, I'm just playing around with this and I'm, I'm just having fun, like in my own little corner, but that I can go and look at my logs. And again, single click install here. I can pick yeah. a log line, uh, unsupported file type. Oh, that was what I was just looking at. Let's do something else. Um, and it it bundles things like the PID with this. So I can go and see what is what log lines are this PID generating? I can yeah. see, right? Like, so like if you do something like start up two web servers at once and so you're they're like fighting over a port or something, you will see evidence of it in New Relic right away by PID. And then you can go look at a top command on your server and find out like what you what you did maybe did wrong. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that live teal might might finally get me away from just littering my in development Python code with assert falses <laughs> and print <laughs> statements. Like. Yeah, with my log statements that are like uh, this happened. <laughs> yeah. Hello, or here, and then yeah. there. Here. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like you know those 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 uh, messages that go into the ops channels. It's like, hey, we uh, we uh, tripled our log billing for the last two weeks. Anyone know anything about that? And I, I'm just certain that I've deployed something that says like logs here, logs this one, logs hello. Uh, we we had something two three weeks ago. We had a Kubernetes instance, a pod that was running on debug logs, and it was generating about 120 terabytes a day, and it was that just counts. like debug logs. And so when we found that out, we were very happy. <laughs> Thanks, log patents. Just well, we the- noticed on the uh, the last nerd log stream I was on that McDonald's.com um, is using console.log to debug their website because yes, you still see them I in the production. That. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and it was like console.logging like hello and five and stuff. It's just <laughs> like a real boy, you were really stuck there. Wow. Uh, though nothing beats, someone was looking at their fridge. They have a smart fridge. And they're like, a little problem with the smart fridge. It has uh, two gigabytes of up a day uh, in traffic. Nice. So that thing is presumably is debug logging up to like, you know, Sanyo Home Electronics main server. I'm going to bust uh, open Wireshark. <laughs> uh, so That's let's... probably just me opening it going, there's nothing that I want and closing it again. And going yeah. back 10 seconds later to go, Oh, there's still nothing that I want in closing it. And, and, and the, the fridge is like calling home to Sanyo HQ being like, there's nothing that he wants. Could you, <laughs> could you talk to him about it? He keeps opening me. Um, <laughs> let's go to a quick break. I'm going to come back with our incredibly patient second guest, Barack. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, uh, Producer Mia is going to put up the Be Right Back. <laughs> <laughs> 